Hello everybody and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's educational videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Humans of New York project and basically looking at how to edit our photo and then format the photo for that project. First thing you're going to want to do is go to image adjustments and if you want to make any adjustments you certainly can. Um, I wouldn't convert it to black and white but brightness and contrast might be appropriate. Um, in this particular case I think shadows highlights is going to be appropriate. You can see when we open up the shadows highlights adjustment that um, the default is to have the shadows open up 35 percent. I typically like to bring that back down to zero and then just tick it up about 5% at a time. So I go to 5%-ish, 6 is fine, 10, 15. And what we find is that if we go too far, it looks really pretty terrible. Um, and, you know, there, there's such thing as too much here. So about 15%. And the goal here is just to open up our shadows. So you can see here our shadows. We can see our subject's eyes just a little bit better. Here's before and here's after. Um, not every picture is going to benefit from this, so you know it just you're gonna to have to look at your own picture and see what it needs. If it needs to be brighter, more contrast, less contrast, you can do that brightness and contrast, shadows and highlights you can do here. The highlights looks really bad. It's really hard to actually successfully do any percentage of highlights. So typically we just use it to open up the shadows. So um other than that, I think our photo looks good. Um the last thing to do before we start to format the photo is to maybe crop it. So I'm just going to select the crop tool and click and drag from one corner to the next just to see where the rule of thirds falls. And you can see here that the left third is kind of on the left side of the subject's face, which I think is working okay. And then the eyes just below the top third. So maybe we'll bring this down so the eyes are on the top third. You could, if you wanted to here, crop it the way that we have it right now or click and drag that over so the eye is on that intersecting point. Um, in this case, let's just say okay. So we'll click um, confirm and we'll crop it like that. You could reinterpret the rule of thirds a number of different ways with this picture. Um, in this case, this is one of the ways to do it. All right, so we've done our edits. We've cropped the photo. Notice we haven't resized the photo yet. So that'll be the last thing we do. Um, the next step is to um, expand the canvas. So we want a nice white border around our photo to type our text onto. So we're gonna go to image canvas size. And we're going to expand the canvas. We want to make sure that it is, uh, down here it says relative. And then we want the canvas extension color to be white, which may not be the default setting. So make sure those are set. We're going to plug in the width 5 inches and then the height as 5 inches. We're just going to expand it by 5 inches by both sides. Now, if your photo for some reason gives you a really big border more than what you see right here, then obviously you're going to go back in and undo that. So you can go near history palette and undo it, go back to the crop here, and then do another canvas size and maybe you'll only expand it by one inch. But you want it to kind of look like this. So, you know, if you need to do more than five inches, fine. If you need to do less than five inches, it's fine. You want a roughly this size white border around your photo. Visually, uh, you should be able to do that. The next step is to actually expand the canvas again. So after we do that, we're going to go and click canvas size again. And this time we're only going to expand the bottom. And the way we do that is by taking the center right here and lock it to the top. So it's only going to expand down from the photo or to the left or the right. But we're only going to expand the bottom. So we still have relatives uh, selected here. Canvas extension color is still white. And then the height, uh, we're going to expand 10 inches. And again, if we need to do more, we can do more. You want it roughly this amount of space. If you have a lot of text, you might need more space. If you have a little bit of text, then well, you can always crop it after the fact. So watch what we're gonna do next. Next step is to take the text tool right here and uh, we're going to create a text box. You want that text box to have a little bit of a white border to separate the photo from the text and also leave a little bit at the bottom. But we're going to roughly make it the same width, if we can, as the photo itself. You can see here, once I create that box, there's this space right here and then the space underneath. So I've given myself that nice border that we've created. Um, I'm going to go and uh, back to um, my Google Doc that I have my interview from. In this case, I'm just going to copy from the Humans of New York here. Um, if I hit Command C after I select this text, so I click and drag, hit Command C to, to copy, go back to Photoshop here. And this is, this is something that could happen. Okay, You can see if I click anywhere in the box, it actually creates a new layer here. So that's not what we want. So I'm going to hit Escape. That'll go away. I'm going to actually delete layer one because it's hard to get back to it. And then what I'm going to do is recreate the box after I hit copy. So your order of operations might be a little bit different. You're going to um, hit copy first, and then you're going to create the text box. Here I can expand that just a little bit. OK. 
happen. And then once I've got my text box selected, I can hit Command V to paste. You can see um, I happen to have the right font and size and everything for it to fit the box, but you may need to adjust this. Um, so once you're um, done that, you can select the, the text and then you can make it a little bit bigger, 36 point, um, or smaller rather, or bigger if you need to. In this case, 48 point happens to be the right text size for this particular block of text. Not always the case. We do want it to be less justified and we do want our text color to be black. So making sure that that's the case. Um, pick a font that's legible, uh, that we can read the text and that isn't uh, weird and wonky. You don't want you know this kind of handwriting that's not that's not great um a simple font is is best here don't choose comic sans don't choose papyrus pretty much ever use don't ever use those fonts they're terrible fonts but um you know um century century gothic is uh okay even american typewriter is a little bit unconventional but you can read it um, helvetica or times new roman ariel those are all good choices okay i'm gonna click ariel here and we're looking pretty good right now. I'm going to go ahead and click this little checkbox. That's going to confirm the text box. And you can see I've got a little bit more space than maybe I want at the bottom. So I'm going to finally crop the photo after I add my text box. I can just click and drag. And I still want some space down there. I want that border, um, but, but maybe not as much space as we had. We're pretty much done. We're going to save the file, file save as, I always save as, and you're going to make sure that the format is set to Photoshop, which should be the default. If you have more than one layer, it should default to a Photoshop format. Notice I haven't saved uh, the file yet. Um, no, sorry, rather, notice I haven't resized the photo. And that's important. I don't want to resize the photo. I want to leave the text box here so I can edit it later. If I save as a Photoshop file, in this case, you're going to call it last name, first name, the whole, the whole normal way we normally name things, save it as a Photoshop format, click save. Okay, I'm going to hit cancel, but you're going to click save. Then we go into image, image size, and we size for the screen. So I'm going to click 72 pixels per inch and change this to 1000 pixels because it's taller than it is wide, so the height changes instead of the width. Um, that might not be the case for everybody, but there it is. Click OK. It's going to get Pretty small, it's fine. File save as, and then this one we're going to save as a JPEG. So the default, again, because there's more than one layer, is that there's a Photoshop file here. We want to change the format to JPEG down here, and then we want to type in last first period and, and name the file. And this is the one you're going to hand into Google Classroom. When you save, just make sure that this is set to 12. You want maximum quality pretty much always. Click OK. I'm going to hit cancel, but you're going to click OK. And that's it. You're going to make the file, you're going to format the file, you're going to edit and then format the file. You're going to add the text in, you're going to crop if you need to, save as a Photoshop file, and then resize and save as a JPEG file. So you're going to have two separate files based on uh, this demo.